So, um, we just heard a wonderful lecture uh, by Dr. Zhao at, uh, at the uh, American Society for Gene and Cell Therapy and um, the exciting new developments and uh, potential for treating heart disease. And one of the things that struck me is that um, let's pretend it's the year 2050 and you have cardiovascular disease, if that still exists. Mm -hmm. uh, what, do you, what will it be like to treat patients in that year? Hmm. <laughs> in 2050, I'd love to see that we have small molecules that we can give to patients with heart disease that actually will induce repair regeneration directly in the injured myocardium. That's very exciting. So uh, as a bridge to that, what are the... Uh, what are the events that have to happen? What, what kinds of things do we have right. to learn to get to that point? Yeah, so I think what we've learned today is that in cardiac repair and regeneration, you obviously have to activate a whole series of mechanisms. And my talk today says that where the initial cell, either cells which are activated or, in this case, administered in cell therapy, uh, most of them really are mediating a microenvironment. They release lots of biologic active factors. That environment sustains the repair regeneration, not necessarily the cells originally. I see. Okay, so the idea is that if you track these cells, almost, I think most work will show that, particularly using adult-derived progenitor or stem cells, that most of the cells are gone within several weeks. And yet the repair and the regenerative mechanism goes on. We think that what happens is that these cells express in a temporal spatial way factors that can begin to, shall we say, cascade a mechanism that involves cell survival, tissue remodeling, and eventually activate other resident stem cells to come in and repair and regenerate. So that's why the small molecule is an idea that you, in fact, you have the right small molecule, you can activate the pathway of these early stem cells to release in a more enhanced way those factors that can cascade into a sustainable regeneration and repair. So uh, that, that's very interesting. So uh, one of the huge areas that's developed over the last decade is the role of microRNAs in controlling cellular pathways mm -hmm. and uh, differentiation, for example. Uh, which, what sort of work are you doing now with microRNAs that uh, might impact on this field? Yeah, first I should say that you're absolutely right about microRNA, and if you look at, in my area, what Eric Olson's done is very impressive, how different microRNA combination can actually lead to, again, in this case, you know, cardiac remodeling, et cetera, and it can be given systemically uh, and actually quite effectively taken up. In our work, we're asking the question, can you directly program a somatic cell to another somatic cell? Others have shown, like Doug Melton, have shown that you can turn an exocrine cell to an endocrine pancreatic cell by having the right transcription combination. And Deepak recently showed that you can possibly do that in the cardiac side as well. So we use microRNA because microRNA is such a kind of maestro of multiple gene regulation. And by looking at the microRNA involved with uh, early development, and the right combination, we found the right combination where actually you can reprogram a fibroblast, in this case a neonatal fibroblast from our cardium, to a cardium outside. And when you do that, then you have a chance of actually directly influencing, you know, a, uh, a um, reprogramming into functional mouse site. That's still very early work. This is more speculation than reality, but certainly the experimental work suggests that you can do that. Mm -hmm. So we may be able to, uh, I mean, a lot, there's so much work now to reprogram cells, but we may be able to do it sort of in situ or in vivo. Exactly. And that'll be a really exciting new development. Well, so that's the exciting part because if you look at the in vitro effect of reprogramming, whether using transcription factors, people, some people are using mRNA, and now even using, say, microRNA, the frequency of reprogram is not that high. Right? Mm -hmm. And people looking at whether they're epigenetic mod modifiers to enhance it. What was surprising to me is to see the work of Eric and others to see in vivo the effect actually is greater than in vitro, mm -hmm. suggesting that the environment does matter and the delivery actually 
is good in, in vivo. So it's, it's, a possible, it's a possible approach. There's still a lot of work to be sure that the efficiency is high enough to end up with an in vivo therapeutic effect. In the near term, nearer term, let's say, what, what do you see happening clinically that um, might move this field forward? Yeah, I think the, in the near term, the issues are one, as was discussed at the conference, that you can probably take adult um, stem or progenitor cells and modify them to make them more lasting, more functional, etc. You can do that by genetic modification, or you can do it possibly maybe you have the right small molecules. And I think that within the regulatory framework for FDA, a cell is a cell, we can modify it or not, it'll be regulated the same way as long as you can show safety mm -hmm. and etc. So then you can make the cells that not the embryonic, not IPS, but the adult cells a lot more, shall we say, efficacious. Right. Yeah. The second thing one can imagine would be to begin to explore the IPS issue. Lots of people are doing that. And of course the question is, would IPS give you the kind of regenerative capacity that you want you know, and uh, so the third. The third, a uh, second, the third will be direct reprogramming, right. somatic to somatic cells. I yeah. think those are the pathways I see. You suggested that the long-term future is going to be about small molecules or individual factors, but um, you also emphasized that there was a, uh, it was very important to have both the temporal and the spatial sequence. Do you think that the cells actually are important as a very, delivery vehicle, even though they disappear quite quickly? I, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, the, the, to me, the um, enigma is if the cell's around for a period of time and is gone, how do you s explain for s sustainable effect over many months, right? And the evidence for regeneration. So clearly it has to be kicking off a, a process by which the endogenous mechanisms start taking over. That's a $64 million question. So your issue about temporal and the spatial expression is absolutely correct. It has to be the right environment. So these cells won't do it unless you are, happen to be in the ischemic environment. And it may do the next thing when the ischemia is over and other signal begins to help the cells to make others. And somewhere along the way, I guess it handles over to the endogenous repair mechanism. That's at least the hypothesis. And it's quite difficult to imagine how a small molecule would be able to do that. Good point, unless it triggers the downstream effect, but you're right. So, you know, everybody who's in any kind of drug development thinks about the small molecule because you can just pop it into your mouth, whatever. Maybe that's not possible, but certainly you hope that you can find a pathway and understand it enough <coughs> to have a small molecule or small molecules. Yeah. yeah. Many of these patients in the clinical scenario are going to have multiple comorbidities and damage in other tissues. Yeah. If you're going to reprogram <coughs> if you're going to reprogram the IPS cells in order to target the heart, what do you think the potential consequences for other tissues might be? Yeah, but that's a super question. I think that exactly is the critical question. So to me, to date, when it's still talking about either administrating the cells to the damaged tissue in local fashion, and hopefully the amount of cells that floats, you know, elsewhere is much more attenuated, or two to introduce those factors that can cause reprogramming locally. Right. And that's why your point about small molecules is very well taken.